hello, my name is Jean-Louis Martins. I'm from the Dacia launching team and I am pleased to welcome you to this decarbonization workshop with a special focus on the Dacia brand and of course specifically on New Spring. So, um, based on the Paris Climate Agreement and the Renolution Plan, Renault Group has committed to reach carbon neutrality in Europe as a first step by 2040 and in the rest of the world by 2050. This is an ambitious target and to, do, to reach this target we need to introduce some electric vehicles in our lineup but also to take care for all of our cars, not only EVs, for their life cycle assessments ranging from the conception to their end of life and recycling phases. So, if we look at the production phase, um, the Dacia mobility approach is based on the frugal use of resources at all stages. Regarding conception, Dacia is focused on essentiality, as you know, and we give our customers just what they need. This means that there's nothing more inside the car than the needs of the customers, and this allows us to design cars that are, in fact, the lightest in the category. Uh, and that's why New Spring remains below one ton and exactly at 984 kilograms for its heaviest version. Another aspect is the conception of the car and the uh, specifically aerodynamics, because as you know, aerodynamics has an impact on the car consumption. For this, even though if we build robust and outdoor cars, we paid attention to every aerodynamic details, as illustrated here by the little drop on the reflector, rear reflector you can see, and this enables us to win a few points of SAX on the car and participate to the good level of consumption of this car. And specifically on energy management, the current spring has a very low consumption uh, compared to other cars. It has only 14.6 kilowatts per hour per 100 kilometers consumption. And with the new spring, we succeeded in keeping this level of very low consumption thanks to its efficient engines and battery system management. To go further, of course, on consumption, we eliminated chrome, decorative chrome on the car, because we know that decorative chrome is something very polluting when produced. We also made the choice to have no animal leather inside, and we reduced the paper to a minimum with a, a digital user manual available for our customers. With this uh, digital uh, user manual and application, the customer can scan some parts of the car with its smartphone and access directly the parts of the user manual that he has just scanned with the uh, photo uh, of his uh, smartphone. So this is something really smart and useful. Now, if we take a look at the whole life uh, um, cycle of the car, we know that usually for ICE cars, the use phase is the one that emits the most uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions. So here we just talked before of uh, upstream phase. Here you've got the supply in black arrows, industry in gray arrows. And for the use phase, we've got the fuel type in red and the tailpipe emissions in orange. So, all the challenge for Dacia, of course, is to reduce its carbon footprint while remaining affordable. And this affordability is something key in the brand identity, of course. On ICE cars, we have introduced a first level of electrification with our new 48 volt mild hybrid engine, simply called TCE 130, that will be available on all new Duster. This participates to a 10% reduction of uh, the carbon footprint. We also have in the range the well-known EcoG 100, a B-fuel LPG gasoline engine that is also pretty efficient. And on top of this, 
we also have a full hybrid engine, the hybrid 140, that is today available on the Dacia Jogger, and which is uh, quite a success because it already represents more than 30% of the sales on this model. So all those three solutions uh, represents a uh, decarbonization level from 10 to 15 percent but of course this is not sufficient we must go further and that's why we do need electric cars specifically affordable ones like the new spring when we take a look at an EV we can notice that in the production phase the manufacturing of the battery emits a bit more CO2 compared to ICE cars but after as there is no emission at the tailpipe, of course, the global view is pretty positive, and that's why we have here around 60% less uh, carbon footprint for an EV. And this includes, in fact, the transportation of the car from its factory to the place where it will be sold, and, of course, the scheme is globally very positive. Now let's take a look at this positive and virtuous circle. We know from the data we retrieved for, from the first generation of springs that the customers drive in average 37 kilometers per day and 90% of them even uh, have never, I said never, traveled more than 70 kilometers in a single day. So all this uh, led us to conclude that there was really no need to increase the size of the battery as its 26.8 kilowatt per hour were really sufficient for most of our customer needs. So this makes us keep this small and light, lightweight battery. We keep the small engines. We keep as well the low level of consumption and it brings us all together in this virtuous circle. Who says all this says also we have a compact and lightweight platform and who says lightness says less raw material use and less CO2 emitted for conception and uh, manufacturing of the car. Now, if we compare the new spring to the first generation, the weight has only increased by six kilos. Six kilos is quite nothing, despite the new equipments and the ADAS that are introduced on this new spring. New spring so remains the electric passenger car in Europe below one ton with a very good life cycle assessment level that has been underlined by Green and Cap organization and uh, spring was already the best in class in Europe car for this and we do believe that with new spring we will have such good results with this new generation. To illustrate my point, I would like us to surf together on the website of Green and Cap. Green and Cap is an independent organization composed of auto clubs and uh, some public institutions, and they evaluate the carbon footprint of cars sold in Europe. Over the last four years, they have already analyzed more than 120 cars including more than 20 electric cars. Their methodology is public and based on uh, public data. They base their scheme on a 16 years and 240,000 kilometers use cycle. With this, they distribute some stars to the cars they have analyzed, ranging from one to five stars. And of course, the cars with five stars are the best among their category, the best performers. So if we take a look at the Green and Cap website and we go to the LCA results, you can go down to use the different filters to navigate the, their website. If you select electric cars, and those without an award, you will see the list of 20 electric cars that have been already analyzed. And on the first column, you will have the carbon footprint of each car measured in tons of CO2 equivalent. If we now stick to the five cars that have been awarded, we can see that Dacia Spring with only 21 tons 
of CO2 equivalent is the number one. And even it has a great result because this value is 20% less than the second in this ranking. So all this to tell you that the efforts made by Dacia to reduce its carbon footprint are important. And of course, New Spring plays a key role in this.